If you haven't been living under a rock, you would know that right now the internet is booming with LGBTQ. Literally, try avoiding gay content while actively using the internet. It won't work. After endless scrolling through Reddit or TikTok or Instagram, the little shower thought might appear in your head. Are humans the gayest species? Let's begin with the fact that it's nearly impossible to find the true accurate percentage of queer people in the entire population. So I'm gonna stick with estimates. After looking at many, many sources, the grand queer percentage turns out to be 4%. Either surprising or underwhelming for you guys. But like, it doesn't seem like any animal could be gayer than that. I mean, 4% is already really high. It basically means that if you had a room with 25 people in it, it's very likely that at least one person is queer. What other animal species could possibly top that? Are we the gayest species? Not even close. If I asked you to picture an animal species that is gayer than ours, what would you think of, hmm? Well, I would bet none of you pictured this one species, and it is penguins. Penguins have been observed to have a queer percentage that is more than double our species at 10%, which is even higher than one of the iconic symbols of LGBTQ, the lion. Lions only have an 8% queer rate, but it is already literally double that of humans. A rather wholesome story is that in a Danish zoo, a gay penguin couple had successfully adopted a baby penguin. Despite all of this, penguins are still nowhere near the top in terms of gayness, as this next animal dominates both lions and penguins in their queer rate. It's ducks, more specifically mallard ducks. These curvy creatures are among the gayest animals in the bird kingdom, coming in at a queer percentage of 19%. Most mallard ducks aren't exclusively gay though. Most mallard ducks still play their role in increasing the population of their species. When a female mallard duck lays its eggs, the male mallard duck can see that its job is done and they move on, potentially becoming gay. Another animal that is slightly gayer than mallard ducks with an average queer rate of 18-22% to 22 are sheep. Yes, sheep. To be specific, two-thirds of the percentage are actually bi, though. Only 8% of the total sheep population is completely gay. We can clearly see that as a species, we are almost nothing compared to other animals in terms of gayness. However, there is still one way we can compete using the queer percentage of some certain groups of people. Let's face it, some parts of the earth are gayer than others, and not every part on earth accepts LGBTQ and lets them flourish, which we're never going to ever discuss. Another big factor is that some communities cater more to queer people than others. So I've searched far and wide for the community that isn't exclusively a queer community, but has a high queer rate. After many days of searching, I found the perfect oyster, the furry community. Their queer percentage is a staggering 49%. 49%! That is literally, virtually half of everyone. And I can assure you that this is not false information because I've had first-hand experience with them. I've met up with a lot of furries before and I distinctly remember most of them being queer. That percentage is obviously way more than everything mentioned before. There is no way any species on Earth could top furries, right? Wrong. I'm just gonna skip over to the gayest species in the entire world. In nature, this species has an enormous gay rate that ranges all the way up to 94%. Just like their gay percentage, their size is also massive, being taller than most trees. Finally, their native land is in Africa. The gayest animal in the entire world is a giraffe. Okay, seriously, how? How are giraffes this gay? Well. Let's go back and start off with humans as the foundation. Oh yes, question? Isn't it weird how organisms can be gay at all? Not to be rude or anything, but evolution and natural selection should favor straighter animals as they produce the most offspring. Why is that? That is exactly what we are going to get into. Right now, it's a big complicated question with many different answers and many different parts. But one of the leading theories as to why some of us are gay is because of a nifty little thing called the fraternal birth order effect. If I were to explain the whole thing along with the little details to you right now, you would probably get so bored that you'd rather go back to doing your homework due next week, which you should do after watching this video. To explain it in the simplest way possible, the fraternal birth order effect makes it so that as more and more babies are born from the same mother, the more likely that they will become queer, 
This is because each and every baby causes the mother to have an immune reaction, which creates neuroligin which builds up which affects the brain of the baby. As babies are born, the buildup doesn't exactly go away. This makes it much more likely that the next baby born is going to be queer. On a side note, this basically means that nearly all queer people are born queer, although there are a few exceptions, not because they encountered LGBTQ on the internet and feel influenced. And yet another side note, some people who are born queer don't know it until they educate themselves and discover themselves through the internet. They might have found a post or a video that genuinely resonated with them. In case you had forgotten, we are currently talking about the fraternal birth order effect. So it must make sense that this effect also applies to giraffes, but on a much larger scale, right? Well, trying to find out whether or not this was true was nearly impossible because no one has done the measurements on a giraffe. I mean, I could try to do it for this video, but uh... <laughs> Jokes aside, there is one more theory that might explain why giraffes are this gay. Back in ye olden days, when mating had just been brand new, it was easier and less costly for brains to not be developed to identify males from females and females to males. This is why gender recognition in animals was a thing that existed way later. In certain species, this method of reproduction can be extremely bad, and thus natural selection favored gender recognition in that particular species. However, in other species, this is not a disadvantage at all. In fact, it could have been a massive W. One of the major benefits of this is that animals can spend less time checking who's male and who's female, and more time mating and reproducing. In certain circumstances, being picky about mating with a specific gender can actually make the animal miss out on real reproductive opportunities oh, as they waste man, too much time. Because this was a big advantage in certain species, the characteristic got carried along through evolution, through time ending up all the way to present day. And yeah, that is currently the best answer science can give us as of right now. A full, clear, and concise answer as to why giraffes are this gay is just not possible yet. There just aren't enough experiments that have been done, and this is where I leave it up to you. Now, I'm not saying you should go out, go to a giraffe, and start monitoring. to- what, what are you doing? Anyway, this is where I leave it up to you. If you actually found the topic in this video intriguing and you want to know more and learn more, you should embark on your own journey. Oh, and if you are doing this, you should like, like, like the video because you must have liked it, right? Right? The reason why you should be exploring this topic yourself is because this video is just a massive simplification of the complicated nuances of the animal kingdom. Anyway, one last thing before we go. Here are the honorable mentions. Rams at 8%, killer whales at 50%, sea lions at 80%, bonobos at 75%, western gulls at 15%, guinean c rocks at 40%, young bisons at 50%, albatross at 30%, and finally, swans at 20%. Humans just can't compare. So yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, okay. Y yeah, you should, you should totally do that.